Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of the Isle of Wight. Last time round we worked on this beautiful Asda supermarket and boy was I happy with both how it turned out and your comments. Now as I mentioned in the previous episode this was the first time I've ever actually built a supermarket and yeah I mean I based it as good as I could on the real life Asda um, but I enjoyed having the creativity to add in a few little aspects here and there that wasn't actually there and I thought it worked out really, really well. Not only that, but we learned something quite interesting. A little fact here from Ray, when Asda opened on the island, they had special edition shopping bags made to celebrate 10,000 bags with Isle of Wight on them, spelt incorrectly. That does sound rather embarrassing, but thank you for sharing that. That's very interesting to find out. We also had a comment from Rob as well. Super build, really like your foliage, just the right level of weeds and bushes. And I did mention previously that I think I just about nailed that. And um, it's, I'm really hit, pleased to hear that you guys think so too. And also Nicholas Brent says, as an Asda home delivery driver, I love this. Thank you very much for that guys. Thank you all for your comments. I do read every single one. So please do keep them coming. But what are we working on today? So we're gonna stay in the same location, but we're gonna move into building some allotments. Now allotments can be called something different whether you are in the country or the world perhaps. However, here I'm used to being calling them allotments and basically what they are is they're a plot of land rented by an individual for basically growing some vegetables or flowers. So the concept of this build today is to try and recreate that look and feel, make it seem like it's a nice location for people to be able to grow some crops and you know just enjoy a bit of the outside garden life. And I think my combination of um, the understanding on what sort of weeds and grass work well with each other in the previous episode kind of sparked the idea of working on this allotment area. The allotment area in actual real life Isle of Wight is actually where we're building it. So it is a like for like in terms of its location. Um, but it's something I could have quite easily just skipped past and not built. Um, but I wanted to give it a go. I did build a allotment about two and a half, three years back when I'd done the first UK series, the British Challenge, and it's interesting to see how different it looks from today. Um, obviously, there's a lot more assets, a lot more networks that we can now use for pathways and invisible paths, etc. There's a lot of things that are available to us that wasn't there before, and obviously, the use of using Move It is a key difference now. We can really make things look and come to life far, far easier. And yeah, it's a very interesting concept when you look between the difference at times in terms of what it looked like back then and what I was able to recreate today. So to start with, like I tend to normally do, I went to the workshop, I basically picked out all of the props and assets that would work nicely for this area and just plopped them down. I just wanted to really get an understanding on what I had on my palette to be able to start working on. and. I kind of wanted to create sort of six, seven different types of um, sort of planting arrangements and these um, little planter areas just so then I could kind of save a bit of time and do a bit of a copy and paste type job to really speed up this build because, you know, allotments are quite similar. There's no point really spending too much time making them look super individual. The difference I had and the way I did this to try and create that same feeling but with less work was by creating these seven or eight different types of, um, of scenes I guess in terms of the um, the build so just adding some variety placing them down maybe changing up the, the layout and arrangement rather than copy and pasting the same um, sort of parallel line version of them really does help in that sense so if it's something you're struggling with if you're repeating a certain area that's duplicated certainly with houses and back gardens try a method like this where you just create a couple of different versions and just alternate the way you put them down on the ground it really did help for this build and i'm hoping at the end of this you'll also um well echo what i'm saying here right now but there are a lot of new props and assets than what I had before. So we've got these beautiful sheds, we've got the planters, we've got the greenhouses. There's a lot more vegetation that we can now use as well, which is always really good. And there's these random props that have come about from various people's builds. 
for example we've got these um, little plant shelves in the corner here which you know they've come about from someone else's build and their props to go alongside it but it works also in this environment here as well so that is really really good it's really really helping me do some of these builds now by having that versatility and a lot more props and assets to work with so I'm putting fences around as well. It depends on the allotment you're in as opposed to whether it's more concealed or it's much more open. I wanted to give this area a bit more of a, a feel that it's not just an allotment area. It's also somewhere you can come down and just relax and spend some nice time together with your friends and family and um, yeah, really benefit the outdoor feeling as opposed to just plots of land that just have vegetation and, you know, things down to work with so that's the sort of feel I wanted to do so I'm trying to achieve that by blocking in some of these areas with these fences um, and added in these extra paths down the middle and sheds with some props of like um, some tables and chairs to you know kind of give that feeling that people do spend you know a couple of hours here maybe every day or so or the weekend just enjoying the outside and sorting out their plants. But just going off topic slightly, I'm thinking of moving into a different location for the next episode. And I've been thinking long and hard about where to head and what we're going to work on next. There's a lot of areas that I'd like to still redevelop on. Um, obviously, we got the ride pier that we started working on the main town there. I really want to get back into that at some point and expand that. But I have found there's been a lot of these detailed areas that the frames have dropped so low. I'm talking some of these are sort of between two and five frames at obviously the highest quality which when recording cinematics takes a much longer amount of time to do so which I don't mind I don't mind because obviously I'm used to this now I'm used to detailing very heavily and having to suffer the consequences but there has been something that's changed in the game I feel recently that's dropped down the frames a little bit more than what it was prior to perhaps the last update I'm not sure if something has happened um, because when I started working on this area for example the frames obviously quite high because there wasn't too much going around but when I looked around the map to other locations it did feel like some of the frames have dropped not saying that it is it might just be something my end but it makes me think that okay let's get away from this area for now and see what else we can work on so I'm thinking we're going to move much further away from this area and start on something fresh and new in the island and um, yeah see see where that takes us so let me know in the comment section below what you want to see me build next whether it's a location or just something you want to see me build UK based let me know and um, I'll obviously have a look through those we've got a big list already which I know a lot of you guys have commented and every new idea that I get I put onto that list so I'm going to try and obviously do as much of those items as I possibly can but anything new that you can think of do hit me up in the comment section below and let me know what you want to see being built next but back into the build you'll see that the land itself here or the terrain even wasn't quite level now a lot of the island is on a slope and the way I've designed the map is very much the same but obviously for this I needed to try and create the land valley to be the same terrain height because of the planters would look silly and some of the sheds would be poking out of the ground so I had to try my best to do that and um, Luckily a lot of these planters on um, sheds are more building like so they do actually conform to the terrain and bring it up to the same level so it wasn't too bad at all we can hide a bit of the ugliness anyway as we usually do. For those of you who have been following the channel for quite some time you'll know that recently we have been looking at the opportunity to allow you guys to build something for the series. Now I decided on a farmhouse because it's a relatively small build and quite easy for me to deploy on the island and well I wanted to get you guys involved in the series a little bit more so if you are interested in building something like this check out the description details below on how you can do so. This week it's time to deploy Sacronation's little village build. This is beautiful. This spot here is actually just down the road from what we're working on from the supermarket and it fits in perfectly. The combination of the buildings and the sheds and the little barn house there work so well together. In fact, this is probably one of my favorite houses that I have used on the workshop for these sort of builds. It just fits in so, so well with a little front garden there. We have the little pathway in with a few gates here 
The plant arrangement here just above the personalized sign I, I really do like. The combination of the flowers there are sensational. The props and the detail that we've got here, it's, it just works so, so well. I really do like the use of every single prop here, in particular, the stacked up cones. It's a very British thing to see, and I really do like that. And even the straw there in the background, just it just works. It's a really, really good build. And if you guys enjoy this build and you want to see more, you can check out the YouTube channel description in the comments section below to follow more of this builder's work. So going back to my comments earlier, this is the kind of method I decided to go with to quickly rebuild this area. So the bottom side again, obviously a little bit shorter, but I just wanted to copy and paste a couple of sections, move them around, make them look a little bit different. But obviously the hard work of the detailing has already been done, which is quite key, I think, when you're detailing, especially when you want to complete projects quicker. I could have spent another four or five hours on this particular build, but just doing this method really does help and it does save a lot of time. And if you didn't know, you probably would have thought I did place down every single item separately by hand. So it's one of those things where if you can get away with it and it still works and it looks good, go for it because it saves a lot of time. Um, and also you don't want to get too bogged down into repetition. That's one thing I found a lot when I've been building is when you're trying to repeat certain areas, which are very you know very common and repetitive it does bog you down it does kind of play with your mind a little bit and you do almost kind of lose lose a bit of the love of that particular build so it's certainly something to keep into um, consideration when you're working on a build similar to this or at least has some sort of repetition and also guys we are getting very very close now to the 10k of the channel we're about 550 ish subs away now from making that uh, milestone which has always been my goal of this channel i've always wanted to get to 10k i'm not sure why <laughs> 10k in particular but it's kind of seen to be the milestone i wanted to reach with the channel so firstly thank you everyone that's uh, support the channel over these these three years i guess now um and your support and comments and everything that you do involving around the channel, the Patreons that we now have, we've had quite a few new ones recently now, really everything that you push into the channel via the Patreon and the likes and the comments and subs really does help the channel grow. And it just gives me more motivation to be able to throw out more stuff to you because I know you guys want to see it. So it's really cool, it's really motivational. And I just wanna say a quick thank you for that. and. Off, off on that, I want to also find out what you want to see as a, a special 10k video. Um, let me know. I'm not sure what to do really, whether we um, do something in a live stream manner um, or I work on a special video, a Q&A or something. Let me know your thoughts and comments below and um, I'll start to think about that because hopefully we're not going to be too much longer away from hitting that milestone. Also, I am really really excited because i have finally managed to book my ferry tickets and i am going to be visiting the isle of wight in the first part of august so there may be a lapse of a video that week um i'll see what i can do but i'm going to be over there i'm going to be going over there for just over a week i'm going to be taking my camera with me i'm going to try and take some shots i'm not going to be able to probably visit everywhere because of obviously the situation with the world at the moment um but I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm gonna take a lot of pictures. I may even do a bit of video footage and maybe put together a little video um, vlog sort of thing regarding my trip to the island. So let me know if that would be of interest. More than happy to put something together if you would enjoy that. Uh, but otherwise, I'm gonna try and take some photos and uh, take some video footage and just sort of try and see what areas I'd like to build when I'm there in person so that'd be really cool I'm going to try and visit some of the places we have already built it as well um, but I'll obviously I'll obviously 
post any progress and things that happen on the channel and the social media platforms. So if you're not following already, please do follow on my social media platforms. But anyway, back to the build. You'll see now that we have pretty much completed the, uh, the allotment area. Just kind of fencing it in now because it obviously would be fenced in to not only stop people but obviously stop the um the animals getting in that aren't meant to be going in to destroy the um the well-kept plant areas so put some of these um these metal fences and we've gone back to using these ones that ronix did for us many 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 years ago when i worked on the walking dead project he put together these broken down fences that have become a great hit on the workshop which are fantastic um, obviously you don't expect anything less from Ronix, he is a fantastic um, creator regardless but it's nice to see that we're able to use those once again in another build. So I also wanted to bring in some people to this location as well and we haven't really got a lot of housing areas around here, in particular this part anyway. So once we've got this down we're going to move over to just adding a small little housing estate over in this top corner. Um, and trying to recreate the look of the road layout that actually is here and trying to make things look a little bit more realistic so there's you know we're just gonna put this house and estate in here and just build up some of the population again and that's kind of what I'm trying to do now with these builds um, we've got a lot of builds down that don't actually house people which obviously does hinder the traffic and the population but you'll see down the bottom we are sitting at 6k people nearly 7k and the growth is increasing which is good um, it's a problem that i had previously with other builds where people just wouldn't come to the island so it's good to see that's fixed and bizarrely we're making a lot of money i have no idea how or why but we're making 27,000 um simoleons or pounds or whatever you want to class as dollars i'm not even sure what it's meant to be but we're making money um which is obviously good i mean for me personally i'm playing this as a sandbox game so it doesn't really affect me but it's nice to see that because it doesn't look good when you've got minus a hundred thousand like i had at times on my monaco series so that is that's pretty cool to see so you'll also notice as well, I put down a lot more of the foliage around. Um, I've, again, like I said, I've found some great combinations now of um, weeds, bushes, trees, plants that just work really well together. So we've taken full advantage of that and plopped down some of those overgrowth areas around the allotments, which, um, which work quite nice, quite nice indeed. And we're just going to stick to these one type of house at the moment for this area. It's going to be more of a a newer estate and we're going to pair these um, detached houses up in sort of twos um, just to make things look a bit more spaced out. I don't like putting these detached houses right next to each other in a long line because it kind of ruins the feel that it's an attached detached house. So that works nice um, but yeah not too much more to add on this build. As I say this is purely just to bring in some more people and sort of try to build up the, um, the living areas which is good because once you do that you do get a lot more people going around and things feel realistic obviously that is one downside to the fact we keep jumping from location to location if we built everything all in one space obviously it'd be a little bit different and there'll be a lot of people going around in the same areas but you know it is what it is and we are finding ways around it but with that said we have pretty much found ourselves at the end of this episode I know it wasn't as productive I guess is what I have done before but I'm hoping that you agree that the finished product of this allotment area looks sensational. Really really happy with how this turned out. I think the combination of different plants and things together worked out nicely. There's not, it doesn't give me the feeling that it's a copied and paste sort of approach. It just gives a nice nice look and yeah really really happy with how this has come about. Let me know what you think. How did the build turn out for you? And other than that, guys, I'm going to leave you with some final cinematics and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Have a good week and all the best.